So the marketing setup, um, building your marketing systems and choosing which one is right for you. The reason I say that is it, it depends on your budget, it depends on your personality, and it depends on what you like and don't like to do. Some people love to be on the phones. Some people don't. Some people have a bigger budget and some people have a lot of time. Some people don't have a lot of time. So depending on your life situation, which we're gonna go over at the end, we will, I'll guide you into picking the best marketing channel for you. For example, Richard, I know you're doing a lot of the mortgages and that consumes a pretty good chunk of your working hours. Therefore, I would like, for example, I would not recommend doing cold calling by, on your, by yourself because that's going to be very time intensive and you don't really have that time, which is okay. Um, I'd probably recommend something like a text message marketing with maybe a virtual assistant for 20 hours a week um, doing it for you. So okay. we'll, we'll get into that, but that's what I'd recommend, like for example, for you and Chris, you as well. You, you have your construction business and you do some, some retail sales and real estate. And um, so you don't have all the time in the world to be texting yourself or calling yourself. Um, so I'd recommend something very similar, getting a VA um, to send the messages for you and just give you the hot leads. Uh, so we'll, we could talk a little bit more about that as we go, but. So leads are important. What if you're the best salesperson, but you got no leads to talk to? What if you're the best business person, but nobody knew who the heck you were? And what if you had money to buy houses, but no one sent you deals? So the reason I bring these questions up are, man, you can be really good at a craft, but if you, if you can't figure out marketing, you're in, you're in deep trouble, <laughs> right? I can be the best wholesaler in the world and I want to do this education business. But if no one knows I can show you how to get your first deal, then I'm never going to get a client. It's the same with you guys. If no sellers know you exist, it's going to be impossible to get deals. So we just want to break that gap. This is probably the most important part of the marketing world that we're going to talk about. We spoke about leads, right? We've, we've thrown out the word leads. We've thrown out the words, uh, you know, deals and things like that. Now let's go into what is, is a lead. Um, in our business, what we call a lead or an investment lead is someone who meets two of these three criteria. Before I start going, um, Chris, Richard, both of you guys have experience in real estate. How many times have you talked to a seller or a homeowner or a buyer that was just shopping? or just looking to hear an offer or just thinking about maybe selling or maybe buying. Bunch All of the time. Times. Yeah. yeah. How annoying is that? Very. It, it's very annoying, right? And with you guys that have limited time since you have other businesses, we don't want to be spending your time talking to people like that. It's frustrating. It's stressful. You spin your tires. Um, you start sending offers. You don't get replies. You send them properties and they never answer you. They don't pick up your call. We don't want to deal with any of that stuff or at least very little. So the way we do that is by filtering the leads, right? Just like a funnel over here. So it all starts with once you get somebody that's interested in selling, this is what we call an inquiry. Anyone looking to sell, then we have our goal is to qualify them to see if they're not going to waste our time, right? And the way that we qualify them is that it has to fit two of these three criteria. It could fit all three or at least two. The person has a real motivation to sell. The property needs renovation. And the seller is asking 80% of Zillow or less. This is a real investment lead right here. It has to fit two of these three. Anything other than this is an inquiry or a retail lead. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. One second. Um, so, okay. So sorry. I lost my train of thought there. So let's do, let's play a little game. Let's play a little game. Let's say we have a lead that came in and, um, they, they sent a text message and said, yes, I do want to sell. Um, my house is, is really renovated. You know, I know Zillow's at 300 and I want 290. 
Is that a good lead? Is that considered a, a hot, you know, an investment lead? No. No. Okay. What if somebody says, "Hey, Chris, um, yeah, I really do want to sell, but just make me an offer. I don't really want to talk too much on the phone. Just make me an offer. I really do want to sell." Is that a real lead? No, not a real investment. Lead. Okay, cool. So the goal is that we funnel it down so we know who our investment leads are, our inquiry leads, and our retail leads. It doesn't mean we're never going to talk to these people. It just means we're going to spend less time and we're going to do more automated stuff for these people. And you guys are going to spend the bulk of your actual talk time to, with with these leads. These are essentially people who want to talk to you. Okay. Um, inquiry retail leads. Any any uh, any questions on on this, guys? Any questions? No, I'm good. So from now on, when I say, um, okay, we need you know twenty leads, it's twenty of these, twenty of these guys right here. Okay, or ten leads, fifteen leads, twenty five leads, twenty of these guys right here. Just just for some sheer numbers, so you guys can understand. Last quarter for our company, it took us six of these to get a contract. So for every six good leads, we got one contract. However, we only sold about half. So it took us about 12 of these to get one sold deal. Okay. 